Hello everyone, it is Dirky Dirk and I'm about to continue my Toxic Build Coach series. This time it's with my friend, Mr. V Jim. Thank you for this amazing thing and it's Emily's which I cannot wait to try. Stay till the end of this video, I will give a link to where I put this thing into battle. Also, I'll have a link to my first in the Toxic Build Coaching series with my poor friend Icebreaker Prime who was kind of a beginning player, gave you some really good beginning tips on how to just build in general. So please take a look at that. And let's continue. And I'm back with my previous segment, the Toxic Build Guide. This time for my friend, Mr. Vigent. So he is a really good builder, this guy. And it's Emily's, and I'm really interested in Emily's because man, they are exactly where they are supposed to be. I knew this was gonna happen, so I got all my infused when they were really cheap. The energy went down to four, which makes this a viable weapon for its PS. You can actually have a whole bunch of them. Now, he did level with me and said, well, this is kind of an art build that I did. So it's really an art build. And then I try it out. It's doing pretty well. So good for you, man. And thank you for letting me do this. And now here comes the toxic part. Assemble. So yeah, I didn't have your paint. I'm sorry about that. So let's start off here. The power score is 780 and you got Emily's. Not bad but if you want to take that down to 6k-ish here's a very easy tip that my friend Mr. Vigent did not know. We replace the cheetah with a hot red. Done. What does that do for you? It lowers your energy. So now total energy is only 13 out of 14 which means I downgrade my generator from an ampere to a Mr. G. So in two steps I went way down about 300-ish to 6746. So there you go. So I want to point some stuff out here, not to be toxic just yet, but just look at the beautiful way that he was able to make this. I mean, little details. The bore goes really well with these little slope narrow things. And you might be thinking these fenders are freaking amazing. Now, I don't know who did this first. Maybe it was Slavu or CRD Gaming who started. He is pretty much the master builder of all time. And that's when I first started this kind of arrangement. It's really, really, really amazing. So how do you do it? That all depends on these little cubby your left pieces. So you need something that kind of sticks out like this. He's using a little piece over here. See that? Just to attach this bit. Boom. That's where the Peaky Blender goes in the opposite direction of what you normally would put it in. And it just looks really amazing. You don't have to do this. You could also use another cubby your left. And that also looks really snanky, snarky, snanky. It is very much an art build, yes, because, you know, boom, and it's gone. PvP is fine for having pretty builds, so don't let that really scare you. Now let's look into the build itself and think about where this could be a little better. So I see this a lot. This drone thing over here, which in my opinion, I don't like the asymmetry over there. If you're going to put it on top, that's one thing. So why is it even here, my friend? I don't really get it. So I just want you guys to be totally clear. This is no longer considered spaced armor. I'm going to slap on an Avenger and let's see how well this thing actually covers your butt. It doesn't. God damn, man. To hell with you. Boy, it's gotten so bad you can't actually test anything anymore without saying hi to all your friends first. Okay, X marks the spot. Boom. Everything is gone. That did nothing as if it wasn't even there. And look what I see. Fuel barrel. Yeah, so that is problem number two, the fuel barrel. So friends, I would say don't use a fuel barrel. Just don't even do it. It's not worth it. This is going to get wrecked. Anything like this, you stick it under here, it's going to get wrecked. You can try to get get away with putting it between your frames, maybe it's still going to get wrecked. So this is my solution, people. If you really want fuel, if you really want to grind for it, there's no other way but this. Armored tracks, Goliath tracks, there's the fuel. That is impossible to get through, almost impossible. And there's two. So what can we do? Get rid of this because it's just ugly. And I'm going to take out the fuel because I don't need a boomy. I mean, this is purely, purely cosmetic. If you have something like that, now you got a nice place for your brake lights, so it looks like a real car now, right? Okay, so what else we got? So we have Emily's, and here is a cheetah, and I happen to know my friend. So cheetah does nothing for this build. The cheetah reduces remaining modular drone and turret cooldowns, besides being fast and awesome in general, 
that doesn't do a whole lot for you, not worth the energy. So you probably want Colossus. It's a pretty good engine and it does a lot of good reloading. But because it's so huge, it really does mess up the rest of the build. So for now, just to save the art build portion, I'm going to replace it with a hot red, which has another purpose, which I will show you really soon. So let's see what else we got. We got two big bumpers over here, but notice how the bumpers are just attached to armor bits. And armor bits are pretty easy to lose. In fact, what I tend to do is I tend to put some grill bits that will attach the bumpers. I'll just use one small buggy floor for the bottom part. Gonna use a wide slope and cap that in. Nice, not too bad, right? What else we got? We got a cab that is really exposed. Usually you, when you're driving, you wanna have some kind of golden ratio between having them shoot your cab and shoot the armor. But bumpers can be a really good way to quickly just kind of cover the cab a little bit. That's not so bad. Doesn't add any HP to the vehicle, but it's better than nothing. All right, now under the hood, let's take a look. We have the best duck in the world is under there. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to touch that. It's fine. Down here is a very good place, people, for putting in some heavy armor bits, like the tank side part. It's going to add to your HP, but it's probably not going to be lost by being shot off. Notice how I have a hot red instead of Colossus. I'm downgrading my energy. Oh, look at that. So what I can do with that is one of two things. First of all, I can add something else. Like a Maxwell is not a bad thing to have in general. But these days, I actually like downgrading. So we have this very explosive amp here. I can downgrade that to a big G. And I try to cover that big G with a bumper. See, nothing wrong with kind of hidden internal bumpers to save the important bits. Now that we've done that, I can see we could use a radio, which always helps. There's no point in not slapping in a radio. And now, Mr. Ducky, I'm afraid I'm going to have to let you go. Because I can put some more HP in here. But now I'm seeing, why do I have a grill bit over here? What is that doing for me? I'm just going to slap a light frame in there to do the exact same thing. Let's compare them. The lightweight frame, it is... 14 parts to a Brilli, 10 parts power score. This is 28 power score and less durable. So yeah, I think frames are actually better than grill bits when you can use them. So we got Emily over here. Emily, Emily, Emily. They are on the grill parts attached to the frame, which is what we always recommend. Perfect. Now, this is the day of the blockchain, which can get rid of frames no problem and degun without even shooting anything else. So watch what happens. Boom. So two Emilies are gone with one grill bit. That ain't good. So always put in some redundancy. Redundancy means putting more stuff in than you need to. Just in case one of them goes boomy, you got a spare. Now that we've done that, we got a big space in here for some massive HP. And to do that, hard module is probably one of the best pieces to do that for. There you go, nice and shrifty. I'm even going to put a wedge to try to extend that step piece out. Getting a lot more HP on this bit. And let's see under here, under this trunk, let's see what we got. So, all right, so that's kind of sad. That one armor bit is gone, everything is gone. Poof. That tells me that a grill bit might be able to go here. Grill bits are good for saving weapons and also just saving big bits of junk that might fall off otherwise. All right, so I'm gonna move this bumper for now just to see under here. So we have a whole bunch of just armor stacked in here is not really a problem but I don't want all this stuff falling off do I well first of all if you ever want to just kind of save your part limit you might want to swap two bits of armor with one heavy bit of armor that has the same general shape and now I'm thinking a grill bit is probably the best for holding all this junk together look we get everything nice I like that I like that a lot snowplows are really some of the best bumpers honestly but in the back I usually will use something like a terrible bar which really does the job I'll put it down here to also protect the stuff on the bottom. And just because I can, I'm now deciding <laughs> probably better to have this all this stuff in the back covering the explosive rather than just being shot from the front. I will actually change this around again. Now I'm just putting in all kinds of different spaces over here. So there you go. That covers that up. I'll flip that around to make it nice and smooth. So there you go. One more hard module. That gives a lot, a lot of more HP. Nice. While I'm adding my HP, I am looking at the 
I'm looking at the mass, which right now is not so bad. So always make sure of that, especially as you're adding scavengers and steppables part. You want to make sure you're not going to go over your mass limit. Nice! I can fit one of these things in there too. I can fit a wide slope. Cool. I will do it. These little crutches add nothing to the weight whatsoever, but they will save my cabin from one bullet. So it's not totally useless. And notice reputation right now is only 8%. You definitely always want to max on that. I'm not much of a fan of horns, personally, but if I was, I can hide something right behind there, which is not, not being used anyway. And I can take this big bit over here, which I did in bumper, and I can put some exhaust onto that. If you're not crazy about all this decor, the fastest thing is just to get some legendaries. And now we can see the part limit is kind of getting there, which means that instead of things like these white parts, I want to upgrade the decor. So maybe instead of headlights, I'll have these little guys, which are pretty cool anyway. And we can just add some more stuff like that, and that looks like a really nice car. Now it's time for the paint. What I usually do with paint is I'll start with something like dark chrome, just as the base layer. Then my favorite, of course, is going to be purple and yellow. So I'll make all the parts that kind of stick out the purple. Now's where I take my secondary color and see where I want to plop it. Probably I want to make this inner stripe on the side. So I'll make that layer yellow. Oh, almost forgot. Make all the metal bits aluminum. Of course, use stickers as directed. This is from a man, Sin Cakes. It's a nice way to give a little shout out. And here is a, a mask kind of a thing, which they'll give you the code on the bottom. Until May 4th, you'll have a chance at this little raven kind of a gas mask. Now, one more thing is frames. And I'm seeing a lot of your guys' builds. You are using these really tiny stripped down frames for everything. And I want you to take a look at this, shall we? So this is a one by four frame. This is the weakest frame as they come. So when that's gone, your tire is gone. And there's a lot of stuff that will shoot through all this junk. And uh, those are not, not really solid frames to use. So this frame over here, this one by six, which is not a lot, that will take out both tires and it's only being held together by these two little tiny frames over there. So please do be careful of that guys. Try to have some better framage. So let's compare. First we have this guy. It's 7109 power score. It has a cheetah which does nothing really except add some speed. It has a very boomy generator. The durability is 1246. Now this guy is 1550. So much more armor, we have less of a boomy. We have a hot red, which actually helps with the reload. But because of the armor, the power score did actually go up. So without that extra armor, I would have had probably 6k-ish kind of stuff. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you again, Mr. Vigent, for this build. I had a lot of good tips on this one. Now, please stay tuned. Here are some links to where I put this thing into battle and test it for sure. Also, there is a link to the first in the Toxic Build Coach series. We will see you next time, guys. Bye. Don't drop that dark and dark. Hey, don't drop that dark and dark.